Good morning. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us on today's webinar, which is leveling up your email marketing campaigns. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by both Pete and Mark from Clockwork Marketing, who really are experts in this area. So they will talk us through some brilliant information. I'm looking forward to it, I think, it's probably as much as all our uh, attendees are today. Um, it's Thursday, the 22nd of February. It's uh, 11 o'clock. Um, I'm Jane Pendlebury. I'm CEO of Hosper. I'm standing in for Harry Fielder today, who's been called away to a different meeting. Um, Harry is the chair of the HMA, the Hotel Marketing Association, and we work very closely together. Um, please do ask any questions throughout the, the webinar. There's a Q&A option at the bottom of your screen. So just click onto that and ask any questions. And um, either a Mark or Pete, whoever's appropriate to answer the question, will come back to you. We're due to be with you for about an hour we may well give you some time back at the end depending on how many questions we have but uh, thank you for joining us um and i'm going to ask um mark to oh here we go the screen is sharing as if by magic uh so the first thing i just wanted to mention before i hand over is that we um are running the hma the hotel marketing association awards this year they are on the 18th of June at the beautiful Ham Yard Hotel, which is where we were last year, and it was very successful there. So we're looking forward to that again. There are still opportunities to enter right up until the end of this month. So that is next week. There are 11 different categories. So please have a look. And you're welcome to off, um, enter more than one uh, if you've got anything appropriate to send in. So please do enter. We've got some really interesting entries already, but we can always use more. And the more choice there is for the judge is the better and the more engaging the the winner actually turns out to be um so yeah please do um put your entries in if you want any more information just get in touch with us and we can share that and then um, register to attend the event as well that would be great i'm not going to waste any more of your time i am going to hand over to pete and mark who are the experts on mar email marketing campaigns and let them take over and i'll pop in later to help with questions and say goodbye at the end thank you so much Many thanks, Jane. Thanks for inviting us to do this pres presentation today. W welcome to the webinar and thanks for your time as well for joining us. Uh, do introduce yourself in the chat, say hello. And uh, as Jane says, pop questions in as they come into your head and we'll come back to them all at the end of the presentation. I'm Pete Stevens. I'm Head of Marketing at Clockwork Marketing. A recent survey, 60% of respondents said that marketing emails have influenced their purchase. That's a, a pretty cool starting point, I think, for what we're going to be talking about today. So for the next 45 minutes or hour, uh, to help you get the most from the session and help you focus, if you could switch off your notifications and put your phones on silent, that'd be great. After today, we hope you'll end up knowing how to create engaging emails and drive more direct bookings. Through Clockwork Marketing's community, we help to build confidence and enable people to deliver great results. Yes, good morning. My name is Mark. Um, I help to lead the online learning community that we have at Clockwork Marketing um, and working with uh, businesses like yours to help uh, to become more successful and drive more online bookings. Now, for anyone who's joined one of our webinars before, you know that we like to start off with a good game of word association. Um, so hopefully the chat is working uh, and you can put that in there. I can see already some people are introducing themselves, so please do use that throughout the session. Um, but we're going to play word association quickly. I'm just going to say a few words and then if you can just pop into the chat what it makes you think of. So the first one might be a bit doom and gloom, but I'm going to say the word news. What does the word news um, mean to you or what does it make you think of? I've run the, run this word association with, uh, with, that, with that word before. So it's quite interesting to see what uh, some people put into that one. Politicians, yeah, being informed, that's a good one. Yes, yeah, I think so, Claire. I think it's mostly that way. Um, great, yeah, so we'll just keep some of those other words coming in. Um, the other word that uh, word associates to think about is the word time. What does time make you think of? I'm going to guess what Pete's going to put here. Pete usually puts time travel. <laughs> Hopefully he's put the same again, if I've guessed right. Lack of time. Yeah, there's definitely a lack of time. Flying by. We're nearly in March already. 
Uh, March is coming up very quick. Time is very precious. Yeah, very good. Okay. And then pulling it back to the topic of today, uh, email marketing. What does that make you think of, email marketing? Esther's gone for it. Uh, email marketing can be difficult. Yeah, again, information, newsletter, sales pitches, all of those things. Yeah, great. So understanding those sorts of words around news, sharing information, the timing, time flying by, making sure that we get attention at the right time and pulling that into our email marketing is hopefully what we're going to explore more of today so that you can put that into practice. So thank you very much for that. My uh, next and final question just for this opening activity is what was the last hospitality email that you opened and clicked on and why did you click on it what was the reason what made you decide to engage with that email very interesting to find out um perhaps some of you on the call today are responsible for the email marketing for your businesses uh, perhaps someone else in your office or perhaps it might be that you're looking to explore doing that, but be very interesting just to understand what it is that you opened to see what your competitors were up to. Yeah, that's a very good reason as well to do that. Keeping a tab, keeping an eye on that. Actual news from the Amori Hotel, Pig Group offers, Haven, subject line mentioned summer and sunshine. There you go, that's a good one. Good example, Sally. Market research, content, brilliant. So these are some of the things that we're going to hopefully try and think about today uh, to then get a grasp on yeah, why it is uh, that certain emails do perform better than others and how you can then take that and apply it to your context. So a little introduction, two words, clockwork marketing. We are hospitality marketing specialists, so we focus just on the hospitality industry, uh, working with um, you know some fantastic, unique properties and individuals to help them grow their bookings uh, directly and also equipping them with the best insights and uh, tools to, to do the job. And so it's based on our sort of 30 years experience in this industry that we're going to be sharing some of those insights with you today so that you can benefit too. And, you know, it might be that for many reasons you're trying to uh, improve your marketing or to improve your confidence personally. Uh, to, to get these sorts of outcomes. And if that's you, then you're in the right place this morning. Um, we're going to be jumping into some content now, which explores all of the email marketing and the opportunities that are there for you. So in the previous webinars, we talked about direct booking strategy and we've shown this funnel and talked about different elements of it. Today, email marketing very much goes in the top of the funnel. Uh, but also a bit in the middle of for engagement as well. It's kind of got it straddles over two parts to it. So why is email better than social? A lot of people do social and social is good for many things, but there's many things that email does so much better. Uh, the number one thing, 90%, if not more, get delivered to the intended recipient. When you do a post on uh, Meta, you have no idea who's going to see it. Um, Maybe your followers, maybe not, maybe people that don't follow you. That's, that's great, but you don't actually know who's going to get it. Um, there's millions of or billions of email accounts out there, so it's got a great reach. Um, your newsletter subscribers have explicitly told you that they want to hear from you. So that's a real green light just to get on and send out emails. Uh, the click-through rate is really high on emails. Um, and people expect to see product info and sales info in emails. In the chat, people were talking about offers and um, you know, opened up emails because it sounded enticing. Um, it's pretty low cost. And uh, the bottom line, I'm sure I got a picture of Elon Musk there. Nobody owns email. It's not going to change. Some properties have spent a decade building up their Twitter following. And that's just been trashed. But that's not going to happen with email. It's not going anywhere. And some really nice benefits of email marketing. It's completely fine to use loads of calls to action, be quite salesy, um, you know, promote the events and the offers you want to talk about. There's some, you know, social media, you to be a bit more careful about that. Um, it's great for brand, but social is as well. Uh, you can personalize your content. Pretty hard to do that with, with uh, social posts. 
Uh, and you can test it all and refine it and measure it really well as well. Uh, email also has a really high conversion rate. So you may not send out loads of emails and it might not be loads of revenue, but people clicking through emails and buying it as a percentage is really high, particularly on e-commerce. So organic, as shown here, might it has a lower conversion rate, but that will be where the volume is. Uh, most sales, direct booking sales come from, but email does have a much higher conversion rate. So we're going to be talking about uh, three areas, but we recommend you do all these for 2024. Um, we're going to show you how uh, in, quite, in quite a bit of detail, but growing your list, you know, sending regular package-driven emails, just some segmenting and retargeting, and then automation as well. So to do all that, you need a, a great email tool. And we will be mentioning the tool that we use called Email Brilliance. There's lots of other tools out there. Um, but we send nearly a million emails every month on behalf of our clients. So we need a tool that's really good, really robust, just works really well, it's really quick, great deliverability. I mean, like I said, there's tons of tools out there, but this is the one that we've selected. It's an agency tool, um, which means we can use it across all our clients. It also means we can uh, pass it on to anyone else in hospitality who who needs a, needs the, the best tools. Um, and we'll be talking them. All the examples we use will be sort of based on email brilliance, uh, but you can do most of the stuff in, in other tools. Uh, but we just think this one is just absolutely perfect for our industry. Really easy to edit. Emails, create what you like. Not going to spend ages talking about the tool. Um, I'm going to hand back over to Mark now. Great. Thank you very much, Pete. So um, just wanted to, again, just get a little bit of thought from uh, you in the chat um, just to find out what it is specifically. So we're going to jump into the elements of uh, creating your email. So um, just before we do that, yeah, just want to find out, pop, pop it in the chat in regard to marketing emails, what is it that you struggle with the most? Is it writing subject lines or is it the actual content of the email? Is it finding the images? using a particular software? Is it all of that and you just need help generally with email marketing or do you think none of it? Do you think actually it's a piece of cake quite easy? I'm just here to get some ideas and inspiration. Just be good to throw that into the chat just before we uh, jump onto the next section. Um, as you're doing that, um, just be interesting, really, hopefully a lot of you maybe aren't feeling this way, but perhaps you do feel this. Uh, frustration of when it comes to planning and ideas of email marketing uh, and so if you do relate to that hopefully we're going to break down the stages so that you can do each step uh, in a really considered approach uh, which is really part of leveling up your email marketing and um, so firstly let me just jump into the beginning bit while people are continuing to uh, yeah put that into the chat I see uh Christian's put a really good point in there about data compliance, which uh, leads me on very nice to email data. So email data is going to be the foundation of what makes your email campaign successful. Uh, I liken email data a bit to this. Uh, some of it is going to be really great information where you've collected it. It's got uh, compliant information um, and I'll jump on to compliancy. Uh, and you've got all the details and fields you need, the information so that when you communicate, you're communicating accurately to the right person uh, with the right information. Uh, some data is bad, which means, you know, perhaps you're, it's a bit outdated, you're missing the right email, maybe the wrong name, but then you just get the ugly data, which is just completely uh, falling apart. It's not accurate at all. Uh, it's potentially just spam information. Um, and so all of this really forms into having a quality set of data. So we can approach that in what we would say the three C's to make it really easy to, to look at is compliancy. Um, everyone needs to be able to opt in. So they opt in to receive communication from you, either regarding to their booking or opt in regarding marketing communication. People can also have, you have to provide the option for people to opt out if they don't want to receive any information again. That will then get put into uh, what we would call a global suppression list. So whenever you send your marketing emails, uh, your global suppression list is there. So then you're not sending it to people who said, I don't want to hear from you. 
correct information, so making sure it is accurate and reliable, it is up to date. Uh, that can be done through your tool, which I'll jump onto in a minute. Um, but regularly checking that um, throughout the year, some of that might be a little bit manual. Perhaps it's just part of your automated uh, process of regularly contacting, saying, hey, have we got this information right? If not, can you update us with what's right? Uh, so that's always a good way of doing that. And then, yeah, finally, just getting all the correct fields for whatever it is you want to communicate to. And we'll touch on personalization and retargeting and segmenting later. Uh, all of these great reasons to have a full data set. So as I mentioned, your tool can do a lot of this stuff. So in Email Brilliance, which is the tool we use, it has auto cleansing rules. So go, go away and check your email marketing tool. Check if it's got this. Um, make sure that it's all set up and working so that it's doing a lot of the hard work for you. It just means it's a less of a headache and that you can carry on confidently knowing that you're doing uh, marketing to the right lists and the right information. Otherwise, if, if you haven't got that, you probably need to review and look at that. So growing your audience lists, this is hugely important. Uh, the more data, the more uh, potential customers that you can collect into your lists, it's like, a, I guess, um, yeah, putting more fish in the pond so that when you are sending out your emails, you're hopefully going to catch more people and draw them more in to make direct bookings. So you can do this really simply in a few different ways. We've put seven here just as some ideas. Um, and some of these, perhaps you'll look at your uh, what you're doing and you'll say, right, yeah, we're doing that, we're doing that, but we're not doing this. So hopefully some ideas for you. But first thing, uh, which we think is a really great idea if you can do it, is adding a little button at the very bottom of your email to say, share with a friend. Um, if your email tool provides it, there will be an option to then add a share link. Um, this is really great because if someone stayed with you already and you're retargeting them, well, they're more likely to say to their friend, I went and stayed at, at this place. Um, oh, they've just sent me this offer, share with a friend, forward it on, subscribe to the newsletter, whatever it might be. So that's a great way to share information through word of mouth i.e. just sharing it as an email. Prize rewards and giveaways are really good, uh, really low cost way of, of uh, building up uh, information. I'll show you an example of that one. Putting it on QR codes, anything printed within your premises, uh, on menus, uh, on display boards, in the room, whatever it might be, they're great ways, again, to incentivize or give people reason to join your email list to hear from you. Wi-Fi through your... Um, uh, booking engine, your PMS, all of that is a great way to collect data. And then following that post-day emails, again, to try and generate and build your list. So this is an example, just firstly, in terms of collecting information with a form. So hopefully your email software provides you with its form so that it automatically connects to your uh, data lists. Otherwise, if you're using it just through your website, you might need to export it then re-import it into your uh, email marketing tool. So relevant data is really important. This is for a wedding book around, uh, show around, and they've included information around the preferred wedding date and also the desired number of guests. If they've got the information about the preferred wedding date, they can target to them later to say, have you made your mind up, given good lead time, because it's a much more drawn out process with, um, with wedding sales. So uh, all of this information you can collect through a form that you can create in a tool such as Email Brilliant. Then this connects directly into your list. So if someone fills this out straight into an audience list, send them an automated email to the potential you know, bridegroom to be, uh, and then also send a notification to your team uh, in the wedding side. So then they know that someone's uh, put it in. And then you can also add them into a sequence to then drip them content. All of that can be done with a simple form added into automation. Um, and we'll touch on automation later. So that's just one way is using forms. Uh, prize draws, as I mentioned, this is an example where, where a cottage group actually, we did this for them where they just had something simple as a, a Yorkshire hamper for a prize draw, put a landing page together, promoted it on social media. Uh, they had about three and a half thousand entrants into that competition. And part of that is that we have to provide an opt-in option for marketing communications. Well, out of that three and a half thousand, 
just under 1,400 opted in, which is fantastic, uh, just from a prize draw giveaway. And then they, they, they gave that away. So now they've got 1,400 uh, potential new uh, customers to, to market to. Time limited giveaways are good. This uh, this hotel they they did uh, an introduction of their uh, small uh, restaurant, so they did a dining giveaway. Um, again, just a simple form on the landing page, promote it on social media, um, and so th there's just some options to try and drive uh, your audience list and grow them. Okay, there's a lot about data. And there's been a few questions about data, so we'll try and come back to those at the end as well. Uh, but let's move on to crafting. Um, so you can think of uh, some obstacles you need to overcome before getting someone to click on your email. Um, and they're kind of in an order, really, because the first thing you see is the subject line. Why should I open this email, you ask yourself. And then you see the header. What can I expect from this email? And the body um you know is it what i expected you know do, do, do i want to find out more i'm going to click the button so let's go into some detail about that you can think of it as some micro steps uh to get three people through to clicking the ball, the call to action such as book now moving through these almost like a story <clears throat> so subject line so inbox is obviously pretty full and you only have a few seconds to catch the attention of your audience so your subject line is one of the most important parts. This one line of copy can determine if your email is open or sent straight to spam. Subject line is like a first taster of what's waiting inside. So you can think about it in the same context as a book synopsis or a film trailer. You know, would you consider giving your book time a book a time to read it if the blurb was boring or basic or you know didn't really give you any inkling of what's inside? You know, probably not. The main difference here is that the subject line is much, much shorter. You maybe want to only have 10 words or nine and an emoji. So we've done a th we put three uh, kind of some ideas of the types of subject line you might want to might want to use. Um, so you don't want to give everything away in one go because it's sort of like the end of the thing. You need to give a bit of a taster. Um, and people can't resist a bit of you know a bit of intrigue or a bit of FOMO uh, on a digital level so we're going to look at these three areas questions open-ended subject lines and just clear messages so asking a question can instantly grab your reader's curiosity um, you ask a question in your subject line readers will expect to see the answer in their email so here's some examples of questions might be looking for a wonderful spring getaway or What's got guests flocking to Cornwall this Easter? Or tempted by a free night stay? Our last minute gifting. We've got you covered. So then the next sort uh, would be open-ended questions. So it's another way of spiking curiosity and leave your readers wanting a little bit more. So hopefully clicking into your email. So some example of open-ended questions or open-ended statements. All of this for only £79 per person, or open for a sweet treat, or a message just for you, or now and never. Um, you know, these are examples that we've used for actual clients, so we know they, they work. And then the third type we're going to talk about is having a clear message. So, you know, you have riddles or riddles and teasers, but sometimes you just want something quite clear to shine through. This sort of subject line works well for events and news Subjects you don't want your customers to, to have to decode. But just be careful of using phrases like book now or buy now, as uh, some people can find them a little bit too salesy. So clear messages, clear messages, examples. Join us at the hotel conference this March. Last minute wedding dates. Spa news, our latest treatments and facilities. Plan your visit. Avoid missing out. Reserve your mother's day table. So quite clear statements there, but still have a little bit of intrigue and a bit of a signpost of what's going to be in the content. And then a couple of other, other tips here. So it's good to use the possessive or the first person pronouns like you, yours, I. It brings the reader into the copy. So here we just made sure that's in the, in the subject as well. Your perfect getaway awaits. What can I expect from a hotel in summer getaway? 
and offer it just for you. Book your Mother's Day table today. When it comes to subject lines, less is more. So the rules of punctuation are flexible here. The subject line doesn't need a full stop because that can imply everything that needs to be said has been said. And the little dot can act as a barrier. If you need to use a comma, subject line may be too long. Um, but there is some grammar you can use. Uh, semicolons, there's no place for that. So, or exclamation marks. If you need an exclamation mark to make your copy sound exciting. Maybe your wording needs to be uh, reviewed, let it speak for itself. The only punctuation really uh, should be using uh, in its normal context is a question mark. You know, if you have a question, pop a question mark at the end. That's the subject line. The next line, next part to think about is fulfilling the subject line promises um, in the heading. So here's a few examples. So SL subject line might be looking for a spring getaway, then the H, the heading, uh, relax and unwinds with our spring getaway offer. Or well, the next one, now or never, and the next line will be hotel inn's 24 hour flash sale offer. And the final one there, what's better than two nights at hotel inn? Three, of course. And then the heading would be enjoy three luxury nights for the price of two. So you can sort of see how it's kind of leading people through and starting to reveal the story. Branding, um, <laughs> another important element. So imagine you get an email from Facebook and the body is deep green with a script font and using words outside of their usual context. This is completely throws up alarm bells, not what you're expecting at all. You probably just delete it, put it in spam. Um, not very good. Um, and you'll remember that and you'll probably be quite hesitant to open another Facebook email again. It's got to be really consistent here. You know, branding combines images, fonts, colors, wordings, just to create a feeling of familiarity, which makes us feel safe. So it's an important feeling when you're considering getting someone to click through or make a purchase. And tone of voice. So don't create an email that doesn't fit with your brand tone of voice. Then the first thing your reader will see, any copy that falls outside of your normal tone of voice may throw up red flags. So because email is a direct line to your audience, it's quite easy to fall into being a chatty tone of voice, which may work for your brand or hotel, but it doesn't always. So you need to make sure you're considering that. I'm just going to put a few examples of how you might consider tone of voice phrases. For example, would you talk about a cheeky cocktail or a fancy cocktail? Is your vibe luxury or boutique or cozy or family friendly? Um, you, know, you need to kind of define what you are a little bit and stick to it. Would you describe your restaurant as heart, hearty or fine dining? And how do you describe the staff? Is it staff or teams? You know, there's, there's many ways of uh, creating a tone of voice. And you start putting your copy in. The layout's obviously pretty important, very important. You need to chunk it down. Go on the, like, the left-hand side, a massive block of text. Nice, short, snappy sentences, paragraphs. That's what we're after. And people seem to read an F-shaped pattern to someone else's research. So that's just saying, put the most important stuff at the top and on the left. Right, call to action. You know, it's got a great subject line, good heading, great body, good images. You need a good call to action. You tell your customers about everything you have to offer, it's fine, but you only have a short amount of time to remain the audience's attention. So referring back to the subject line, if your email is about an offer, make the copy and the call to action about the offer, about meeting expectations. You always need a call to action. Without a call to action, there's not much point in sending the email. It limits the reader engagement. So you can write the best copy, but if there's no call to action, the really doesn't know what to do next. And it's unlikely they're going to take the time to go and find out on their own. The calls to action need to be clear and concise and, you know, action driven. So here's some examples, short, snappy, book now, call to book, read more and so on. You need to talk about imagery as well. Um, and these need to link again back to your subject line promises. So you need to select images that tell a story. So if the reader skim the copy, 
they can still understand what the email is about. And if your email links to the landing page, which you should do, then you can use the same images there to keep that consistency, consistent flow. Uh, and a few tips for images. So good quality, not off your phone. Can't, <laughs> can't overemphasize that one enough. Uh, nice and relevant. So if you're taking, if, you start, if you're promoting a, a bedroom or a stay offer, then you want photos of bedrooms. Um, something nice and familiar as a local area. And clickable, like I've already said, you need to link all your images to the offer. People tend to think every image is clickable. So that's easy, just make it clickable. Uh, so here's an example of an email using a strong image of a location to sell the uh, book direct offer. And a couple more images have been used to align the offer and the message. So the left image is an autumn email showing what to expect at that time of year with kind of autumnal hues. The one on the right is promoting a stay and dine. So we've got some interior shots of those elements. Great, thank you, Pete. Um, hopefully lots of ideas there to take and put into um, your email uh, campaigns and, and crafting your templates. Now, this is a really interesting part for me, um, is the personalization. We're seeing a lot more uh, of this coming up in upcoming trends. Uh, we've identified it in our own hotel marketing trends. We've also had futurists involved with us who have been looking what hospitality might be like in 20 years time. Um, and all of that brings up personalization and a personal service. Um, I attended an event last year in April and this quote came up. It said that personalization can increase conversion by up to 80%. So I thought, well, that's quite an interesting stat. Let me put that to the test. Um, and testing is a great way, by the way, to, to figure out what is working, what's not. Um, we'll, we'll touch on that again uh, later. But here's an example of where I took a campaign for Clockwork and I just added in some personalization. Um, so I, I, I got data, and this is where quality data comes in, that you have all the information to then be able to craft this. So I put the first name in, I'm being personal, I'm having a conversation uh, with, with this person. Uh, I know they're based in East Midlands, so I added in uh, a reference to East Midlands. I also added in photography and great imagery of the East Midlands uh, so that they have that sense of familiarity when they open it. Um, now, this could be for your hotel. You could do the same, you know, talking on a first person basis. Perhaps they're uh, an existing customer and you're talking about a repeat visit. So think about the time of year that they visit and then also use imagery to reflect the season. Uh, so that's one way you can bring uh, personalized imagery into it as well. Perhaps it might be, well, you stayed in this room last time. Have you not seen our new room? And then add in photos of your new room. Uh, all of that stuff you can add into your uh, templates for making it, again, more personal. Now, let's look at the results. So on the left-hand side, I've got the standard general campaign, not really sent to anyone, just a, a, a normal message. And I was measuring the click to open rate. So this is how many people have opened it, but also engaged in the email. So in the green bar, 4.5% click to open rate. It's actually lower than an average. You know, someone's just seen it and gone, oh, it's just another another email. I'm just going to disregard it. Whereas the personalized email on the right hand side, click to open rate was 55 percent, um, much, much higher than the average. Someone's seen it. It's it's speaking straight to them. Perhaps I've used their uh, their name in the subject line or in the email inbox preview. Uh, and they've gone, oh, this is this is directly to me. Let me click and see what it's about. Um, so you can just see how actually those results do impact how engaged people are. So if you have quality data, uh, then you can do personalized campaigns like this. Um, and I'd encourage you to go through your data, look at what you have, which is strong, uh, and then you can create that into segments. So segments are just broken up information of your data lists so that you can target them based on particular criteria. Um, so your criteria could be people who have clicked on a specific link, even perhaps they've just clicked on offer links. Well, they're very interested in offers. So we can create an email segment to say, these are our audience that are interested in offers. Perhaps it might be that they've opened specific emails or 
you might be targeting them just for locals for a local offer. So you can start to break down by postcode if you've got that information. So this is just again showing you how important that data quality is. Split your data up between what is good and what isn't good. And then you could say, well, I don't have a name for this person. I'm going to send a standard email, same email. And then actually I've got names for this, this list of people. I'm going to send the same campaign, but let's put in uh, that data merge. Let's add in their, their field name. So first name, uh, any other information that's personal to them. Compare the two campaigns. And I would put my money on it that your personal campaign is going to perform a lot better than the general campaign, as it did uh, for that example I just showed you. Now, all part of targeting is about speaking directly to that individual, uh, but it's also important to speak to them at the right time. So understanding when to send your email is really, really important. Um, now, there's lots of data out there across industry for marketing, not just hospitality, uh, which will say something like, this is the best time to post on Instagram, or this is the best day to post on Facebook or on X. Um, and, you know, perhaps that's just a general and very broad uh, view of, of it. Whereas what we would recommend is very specifically to consider your data. Your data is very different from, you know, the next competitor's data or to other peers in your industry to their data. Um, all of it is different and unique, and the way that people engage with it is different and unique. So by finding out information uh, based on, you know, your analytics, perhaps that's in your email tool. So this is a screenshot from Email Brilliant showing you this engagement timeline of when people opened and clicked based on the day. So from this information, I can actually see, well, a lot of people opened on Tuesday and a lot of people actually clicked on a Tuesday. So Tuesday is looking like the best day at the moment for my data. And then closely running up second is probably a Wednesday. But I want to find out a little bit more than that. So I'm going to change the drop down on the right to the time. Uh, so let's have a look at the time. And I can see here that the best time to send my email based on clicks is probably 10 to 11 in the morning. And then perhaps the second best option might be later in the evening or maybe between 12 and 1. So I've now lined up that Tuesday between 10 and 11 is the best time to send my email based on engagement. And then if I want to resend the email again to retarget someone, well, let me try Wednesday, maybe later on in the evening. Perhaps that's a better day for someone to click and open it. So you can just see how you can really squeeze the potential out of your email campaign success just by looking at that information. So uh, do go away, have a look, see if you can find that information out. Um, really, really valuable to you. Great, great insight there, Mark. Um, so once you've sent your email, then you have two options. Option one is doing nothing. Wouldn't advise that. Option two, you can do a resend. It's people that opened, didn't open it, clicked, clicked a specific link. Um, but you know, you do it in a planned way and understand what you're doing. Um, so if you've got a large data set over 10,000, then we'd normally recommend, uh, resending to people that hadn't opened the email, um, below 10,000, then probably do a resend just to the whole list after maybe seven days. And you can change elements on your new email that you're sending, completely new email, but you can also just refresh elements like the uh subject line or the pictures or the heading something that may be a bit more intriguing if it hadn't worked quite worked out as you thought the first time um and you can retarget people that opened it as well so um you know good it's good to help drive those conversions after the initial mailing changing the subject line again like i mentioned uh it's pretty straightforward to do that you just click on the uh, automated retargeting little box uh, and then set your criteria Plenty of things you can change. So top right, you pick a time and a date when you want to send it, based, based maybe on what Mark's just said. Um, and then the bottom right, you can select the sort of criteria of what action you want to trigger to send it off for people that didn't open it, uh, or clicked a link or clicked any link. And then on the left, you can start uh, finessing, you know, the the uh, subject line, or just completely pick another email. Um, so that you can schedule all that in. 
uh, to, to resend and increase your uh, open rates and click rates. So marketing email automation has been around for years, uh, like decades probably. Um, so I recommend you have a slick email process and utilize that as much as you can. What happens when a website visitor signs up to your email newsletter? You know, what would you expect if you signed up to another brand's newsletter? I mean, at the very least, I would expect an instant email into my inbox saying, thanks very much for welcoming me to their, to their club almost. Very simple to do that. Having a neat form on your website, sign up to the newsletter. Then behind the scenes, it goes into a very, this one's like a two-step process uh, that collects that data and sends off an email going, welcome, very easy. You can do more in-depth ones. Um, you know, if you've got a, uh, you know, a potential bride and groom who's looking to get married, for example, they might want to spend twenty thousand um, pounds. If you're making that sort of inquiry, you'd expect to, you know, get quite a lot of uh, communication and brand messaging from the property. And automation is great for that, especially for these longer cycles, you know, like weddings and conferences, where you want to just keep on engaging with the person who's made the inquiry. So you could maybe send, you know, four or five emails over the course of a month or more. Um, you know, for a wedding, it might be here's a gallery, uh, here's some nice testimonials, here's some of our suppliers, um, just to kind of keep building that relationship. Final piece of the puzzle, and this pretty much ends every single webinar we do, <laughs> is tracking what you do. The most important thing. Um, I'm sure you, you all remember that Google Analytics changed last summer. It was all different. It's basically tra tracking the same stuff. Uh, for this level of what we're talking about. You can still see how many people uh, clicked on emails and how much they spent. But you can dive down and find much more granular info. So if you log into Google Analytics on the top left, you click on reports. And then step two, you find traffic acquisition report. Um, and then once you get in there, uh, you can add a secondary dimension and if you pick one that says it's all labeled for you session campaign like we've shown here number three uh, if you're using email brilliance that'll just bring in the subject line of the email which makes it nice and easy to see and then do number four if you type an email in that search box to just see all the emails to get rid of all the social and all the uh, organic traffic so you can just really start drilling down so how well each email performs. So just sort of zooming in a little bit, we can see this first top one, this email exclusive Black Friday offer drove 2,836 pounds of revenue. That's great. This the next one down drove 2,565 and so on. And then down, you know, down the bottom, you can see the ones that don't, you know, convert at all, which, you know, really helps you learn because you can see right, what, what's good about these top ones and then what, what's wrong with these bottom ones and, you know, how, what can we do to make it better next time? Brilliant. Right. Okay. So that's, we sort of covered all of the topics or areas that uh, you can really start to go into each step to improve your email marketing process and your activities, take some of those ideas and think, actually, I'm doing this already, but I'm just going to do this even better. Um, just really honing in and, and being specific. But um, some of you on the call today will probably find something that we've perhaps touched on that you think, yeah, that's something I really need to think about. And just be good if you could put that into the chat just to get an idea of, you know, where you're at, where everyone else and your peers are at as well, you know, all working in the hospitality industry. So uh, just good to share what you are going to take away from today. Um, as Pete sort of pointed out, we tend to finish a lot of the webinars on traffic and measuring because we, we want to make sure that what we're advising is practical, that it's actually doing something and so actually going out and putting it on in the chat, typing it out or writing it on a piece of paper, what you're going to go and do, um, you're more likely to go and do that thing and, and put it into practice and not just jumping onto a webinar, you know, and then listening to some stuff and thinking, oh, that was good. That wasn't so good. And then just going about your day and, you know, hospitality is very busy and there's loads of things going on. So we want it to be practical. So. Um, yeah, be good to know what you're wanting to do. If it is something that you're not sure of yet, we've put a few points down. Uh, there we go. Yeah, a few points just from today that we think, you know, if you are going to have a go for it, then these are some sort of simple steps. So check your email marketing tool. Just check that it's doing everything you want it to do. It's easy. It's quick. You know, it doesn't make your life difficult. 
Um, you want something that does the job. Um, I say this all the time about uh, getting some tool or software to do the thing you want it to do. Uh, you wouldn't eat soup with a fork. If you do, you're weird. Um, but you would need the right tools, a spoon to eat your soup. Um, make sure that your data quality is great uh, and that you're also retargeting and segmenting that data so that you're doing a great job of squeezing it uh, for all its potential. Follow those steps uh, that we went through uh, on, on crafting your template and then compare and measure, you know, do a bit of testing, find out what's working. Um, all of the webinar will be available on demand so that you can go through it and, and check it again. Um, but I'm just going to pass back to Pete uh, and then we'll look at questions later on as well. Right, so you don't eat soup with a fork, is that right, Mark? Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, well, I'll do questions in two seconds. Uh, just to come back to the, uh, you know, a tool, if you're looking for a tool, um, I probably think I forgot to say that HMA members get 20% off, which is pretty good. Um, uh, and the tool we use is called Email Brilliance. We're, we're happy to let anyone know more info about it if you're interested. It's sort of a it's kind of normal pricing model, I guess. You you know pay monthly for what you use. Um, I think it's pretty affordable for what it is personally. Um, and we we do all the setup for you. So if you're using Mailchimp or someone else, you can import all your data, create you a beautiful email template. You know with your brand, set up the autoresponder so you know that part's working and give you training and um, you know support as required. Um, so reach out if you want more info at any point. I want to remind you about the HMA Awards. I don't know if Jane wants to jump in at all, but uh, we're sponsoring Best Website. So hopefully it's a great website, so people want to put in for that. Jane, do you know? Yes, thank you for sponsoring that. That's that's brilliant, Mark. Thank you. And I have seen that Harry's actually joined us oh. as well. So um, just thought I'd let him. Hey, hi, Harry. Wait, I think you're muted. Hello? You can you hear me now? Listening to me then. Ah, you're there. Hello, hello. Yes. Thank you very much. That was I've I've had a sneak peek of all the content, so I knew that it was going to be a very informative session. But yes, we do have our awards um, coming up, and it would be we're in the, in the final straight for entering. Um, uh, we, I think the deadline is is the 29th of February. So uh, get your skates on. But there are um, some incredible new categories this year, uh, which will undoubtedly be a fantastic event at Ham Yard um, in in June. So. I'm sure there's a lot of a, a great variety of different categories there, and I'm sure some of them are going to fit. You're not limited to entering just one category; you can enter multiple. Um, and you know, it's been uh, it will be a fantastic event when we get there. So uh, we're in the home straight, 29th of February. Get it in the diary, um, and and I do have a do have a a strong uh, a strong consideration towards entering because um, it's always a good celebration of hotel marketing. That's absolutely right. Thank you, Mark. Pete. I learned a lot during that. It was it was beautifully presented and full of some really useful content. So, I'm assuming everybody else has um, had the same benefits as um, as as I have. So, thank you for that. Um, I think you did pretty much uh, keep your eye really carefully on the chat there. So, hopefully, any any questions have been answered. But if there are any outstanding, we can pick those up afterwards and, and get back to the individuals if we've missed anything, or if you want to drop us an email with a question. Um, you can either send it there's, there's okay, can i jump in a couple very specific i just wanted to cover if that's all right yeah go ahead uh well, some about gdpr um so i mean just storing data i mean the safest way is just to store it in the uk and then you're going to be covered uh so make sure your provider's doing that and there's questions about single opt-in double opt-in um and spam which i thought i'd just quick talk about how, how they work um so Double opt-in is really only to stop spam. So you don't need to do it, it's just optional. Uh, so double opt-in is when if, if the user puts in their email address, that goes to the system, the system sends them an email to say, are you really a person? Do you really want to opt-in? And they click yes, and then they're signed in. So it's like the gold-plated version of getting people to sign in. And if if you're getting spam, then it will just should really uh, reduce that massively because the spam bots won't do that. Um, but single opt-in is completely fine and it is completely um, you know, legal if you have a very clear statement on your email sign-up form saying, you know, by cl clicking submit, you are signing up to our email and you're going to get your email processed and send emails, then that's totally fine as well. Uh, so that's how we would view those. And I'm just going to squeeze through to see if there's any other particular questions. 
Uh, I can use capture feature. Uh, well, you could you can use recapture on on forms depending on on what system you're using, but maybe the one you've got doesn't let you do that. That's any um, on there. How do you account for delays in delivery when trying to find optimal send time? Uh, yeah, I don't even have an answer for that. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> Sorry. Mark's going to come in. Mark's got an answer. <laughs> I'll just put my my last bit in and then I'll say bye as well. But um, <laughs> yeah, my my answer to that is just, it drops it into their inbox. All you're responsible for doing is dropping it in, in their inbox, letting it sit there in the queue. It's more just about the time when they engage with it and when they click it, it's not really about you getting them when you know that they're looking at it. It's just sitting it in their email uh, inbox. So that's just based on the data. So it's very specific to your audience. So I... I would just look at the data and then go with what that's saying, because ultimately, if they're clicking it, that's what you want to get more of. So uh, that's where I'd leave that. But yeah, I think um, any other questions that we see, hopefully we'll be able to find them in the uh, in the chat and we can follow those up afterwards. Um, but yeah, that'd be great. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for your time on the call today. And um, and also for yeah Jane and Harry for also um, setting it all up and hosting it. Brilliant. Thank, well, thank you. you for your insight. Wonderful. Brilliant. Thanks very much. And we'll see you on the next one.